A 43-year-old pilot with over 1,700 hours takes off on a calm night under a full moon with plenty of fuel in his Beechcraft Bonanza. Yet just minutes from home, the engine quits. Not from weather, not from mechanical failure, but from the most common mistake in aviation. Fuel starvation. And here's the crazy part. He still had more than 30 gallons on board. How does that even happen? Let's get something straight right away. Brant Barnes was no weekend amateur fumbling around in an airplane he didn't understand. He was a licensed commercial pilot, instrument rated, and had more than 370 hours, specifically in this Beechcraft Bonanza M35. That's not casual familiarity. That's real experience in this exact type. On top of that, he worked as an insurance executive. Now why does that matter? because insurance professionals live and breathe risk management. This was a man who understood consequences, probabilities, and preparation. And beyond the logbooks and licenses, Barnes was known in his Arkansas community as a businessman, a father, a steady presence. When you put that picture together, this accident stings even more. Because if someone with his background can fall into a trap this simple, what does that say about the rest of us? Here's the reality. Experience is not immunity. In fact, human factors research has shown something truly counterintuitive. Experienced pilots are sometimes more vulnerable to routine mistakes. Why? Because repetition builds confidence, and confidence often dulls vigilance. You've done the same flight a dozen times. You know the airplane inside and out, so the tiny checks, the cautious second-guessing, start to slip away. And that's the real trap. Barnes is a cautionary mirror for thousands of general aviation pilots out there. Well-trained, well-intentioned, but still human. Now, to understand why this went wrong, we need to look at the Bonanza's fuel system. And honestly, it's one of those designs that almost invites human error. The Beach M35 carries two 25-gallon main tanks and two 10-gallon auxiliary tanks. On paper, that sounds straightforward. You've got your mains, you've got your aux tanks, just pick which one you want to draw from. But here's the catch, and it's a nasty one. Both auxiliary tanks feed simultaneously, and any unused fuel doesn't go back to them. It only gets routed into the left main tank. So while you think you're pulling evenly, the system is actually unbalanced and asymmetric by design. That's the kind of detail you have to actively remember every single flight, or it will bite you. This is why pilots mismanage it so often. It looks simple. Flip the selector to aux and keep flying. But if you don't switch back quickly enough, you're not draining just one small tank. You're draining both together. That means those little 10-gallon reserves can vanish in a shockingly short time. Contrast that with more modern aircraft. Many of today's general aviation planes have simplified fuel selectors, or at least clearer tank gauges, so you don't have to constantly play mental math with fuel return systems. The Bonanza setup dates back to the 1960s. It's perfectly legal, perfectly functional, but it demands constant monitoring. And that's the real point here. A system doesn't need to be broken to be dangerous. Complexity and asymmetry are fertile ground for human error. And that's exactly what happened on this flight. So, let's walk through the actual flight. The outbound leg was textbook. Full fuel, Smooth flight, two passengers on board, no problems. Barnes lands, drops them off, and doesn't refuel. And honestly, he didn't need to. The numbers still made sense. On the return leg, data from the onboard engine monitor and ADSB tells the story. At first, Barnes is running on a main tank. Mid-flight, he switches to the auxiliaries. Standard practice, nothing unusual there. But here's where things start to unravel. He stays on those auxiliary tanks for too long. About 14 minutes before the crash, he's still feeding from aux. Then, roughly two minutes before impact, both auxiliary tanks hit zero, bone dry. The engine loses power even though there's still about 25 gallons sitting in the left main and 8 gallons in the right. That's enough fuel for another hour of flight, but it's locked away in tanks the engine isn't drawing from. A witness near the airport describes hearing the engine sputter, surge, rev high, then go quiet, 
the exact sound of a motor coughing on air as the lines run dry. Barnes was only three miles from his home airport. Three miles. If he had switched back just a few minutes earlier, the flight would have ended uneventfully. Instead, the engine died low and close to the ground. He tried to turn toward an open field, but with so little altitude left, there was no margin. The timing error was small, but in aviation, small is all it takes. So here's the real kicker. Brant Barnes didn't crash because he didn't know how his airplane worked. He crashed because of how the human brain works under stress. And that's the most frustrating part of this whole story. Think about it. Barnes knew he'd filled the airplane earlier that day. Subconsciously, that creates what I'd call the illusion of sufficiency. If you know you started the trip with plenty of gas, you're less likely to suspect fuel starvation, even when the engine starts coughing. In your head, you're already convinced the tanks couldn't possibly be the problem. That's how dangerous assumptions sneak in. Then layer on the fact that this was happening at night. He's talking to ATC, setting up for a left downwind, scanning instruments, and lining up mentally for the landing. That's task saturation in its purest form, and night flying just multiplies the workload. Your eyes are lying to you because depth perception and peripheral cues are gone. So instead of calmly troubleshooting, you're juggling everything at once. Now here's a really crazy part. When pilots commit to a single explanation, they often stick with it even when it's wrong. Psychologists call this cognitive fixation. Maybe he thought it was a mixture problem, maybe a temporary engine hiccup. Either way, once your brain latches on, you can delay the simplest fix, flipping that selector back to the mains. And let's not forget survivorship bias. Every pilot has had those little lapses that didn't turn into a crisis. Maybe you left a fuel pump on too long, maybe you misread a gauge and caught it later. Nothing bad happened, so your brain files it under. It'll probably work out. Until one day, it doesn't. That's exactly what happened here. The real point is this. Accidents like this don't usually happen because a pilot is ignorant. They happen because even good pilots suffer momentary lapses under pressure. And aviation punishes those lapses brutally. Here's where we have to draw a very sharp line. Legal fuel is not the same as safe fuel. Don't get me wrong. Barnes was legal. FAA rules say, under VFR, you need to land with 30 minutes of fuel in the tank. He had way more than that, on paper. But here's the truth. A tank of fuel is completely useless if it's in the wrong tank. And that's where the gulf between compliance and safety shows its teeth. Barnes had the numbers, but the system configuration and his timing left that fuel stranded. This isn't a one-off either. Fuel exhaustion and starvation account for around 7-10% to of general aviation accidents. And the crazy part? Most of those involve experienced pilots, not rookies. It's not because they don't know better, it's because the system allows them to think legal equals safe, when it doesn't. Compare that to the airlines. In commercial ops, fuel management errors are almost unheard of. Why? Standardized procedures, crew cross-checks, redundancy. One person makes the switch, another person verifies it. GA pilots don't have that luxury. They're flying alone, managing everything themselves with no backup brain in the cockpit. That difference is massive. So Barnes didn't break rules. He fell victim to that gulf between what the FAA says is good enough and what real world safety actually demands. And unfortunately, the airplane doesn't care about regulations. The NTSB's conclusion is blunt. Fuel starvation due to mismanagement. End of report. But if you stop there, you miss the deeper discoveries that actually matter. First, the design flaw. Auxiliary tanks that feed together and dump excess fuel into just one main tank. That's asymmetric and unforgiving. It means small errors in timing have big consequences. Second, the human factor. Pilots underestimate just how fast those little 10-gallon awk tanks can drain. They're mentally thinking, I've still got gas, but the reality is those gauges can hit zero shockingly fast. Third, the situational factor. Night flying removes critical margins. Even with a bright moon, judging glide range and field distance is almost impossible. Barnes did try to turn toward an open field, but the margin just wasn't there. 
So what can we take away? Treat auxiliary tanks as get-home fuel, not something you rely on in the final stages of flight. Periodically cross-check gauges against your expected burn rate. Don't trust memory alone. And practice night engine out procedures because the darkness will play tricks on your brain when it matters most. At the end of the day, Brant Barnes wasn't reckless. He wasn't careless. He was human, flying a machine that punished a small oversight with catastrophic results. And that's the truly sobering lesson. In aviation, the smallest slip, the one you think could never happen to you, is the one that can cost everything.